I made this video to help you understand your veins and the venous problems someone can develop. Hopefully by the end of this video, you will understand why these conditions happen and why you can do to prevent it and how can you take care of them. Let's just talk by talking about your veins. So in the vascular system, you have two main types of blood vessels. You have the arteries. Those are the thick blood vessels that come off the heart and take the blood flow to all other organs. Because they come straight out of the pump, which is the heart, the pressure inside your arteries is your blood pressure that you can measure with a regular blood pressure machine. And that's why they need to be thick to withstand that blood pressure all the time. And the blood flow in the arteries move because of the pressure that the heart causes. Now the veins, believe it or not, they tend to be bigger than the arteries, but they are thinner because the pressure inside the veins is usually not that high. And the blood flow in the veins back to the heart tends to be passive because you don't have a second heart put, pushing the flow back. Although you don't have a second heart, the muscles in your legs and especially your calves can work as a pump every time you walk or do exercise. And that's why walking and exercise help your venous circulation tremendously. But when you're just standing and not walking, how come the blood just not go back downstream with the gravity? Well, that's because inside your veins, there are tiny one-way valves that prevent that. These valves open so the blood flow can go through, but when you're not walking, they close to stop the blood from flowing backwards towards the legs. And like I mentioned before, this is very important because getting the blood flow back to the heart is an uphill battle against gravity. When these valves are damaged, and in medical terms we call them incompetent, the vein will then dilate and weaken them. The blood can pull inside the veins or even move backwards. And this is called reflex or simply backwards flow. And this dysfunction and damage can lead to many of the venous problems we're gonna be talking about. Essentially, anything that will impair the blood flow return to the heart is considered a type of venous disease. And what will cause the damage of these valves? Well, genetics certainly plays an important part. We see that often varicose veins run in families, but some patients can just be born with faulty valves. But certainly, if for any reason you develop a blood clot in the veins or even just inflammation of the veins, this can lead to damaging of these valves. Now, the other thing that you need to know about the venous system is that you have deep veins and superficial veins. The deep veins are the veins that are located inside your muscle. They are difficult to find. You will never see them because they are under the fascia. And those are the important veins for physiological purpose. Again, those are called the deep veins, and those are important. The other type of veins are the superficial veins. Superficial veins can be useful, but mostly for medical purposes. For example, you can use superficial veins to get IVs in your arms and draw blood. And we also use superficial veins to perform bypass surgery when necessary. But physiologically, they do not have a lot of function. And in fact, your body can perform perfectly without having any of the superficial veins. Keep that in mind. Of course, there are many types of venous disease, but today we're gonna focus on five of them. We're gonna talk about varicose veins, spider veins. We're gonna talk about chronic venous insufficiency, which is when your valves in your deep veins fail and you develop chronic leg swelling related to that, which can lead to many complications. We're also gonna talk about phlebitis, which is an inflammation of the veins, and DVT, or deep venous thrombosis, which is when you develop clots in your deep veins. In general, symptoms of venous disease can include leg heaviness, swelling, leg fatigue, pain, cramping, discomfort, redness or warmth to touch, itching, or a burning sensation. And varicose veins or spider veins can develop as well. We're also gonna talk that in very serious venous disease, you can also develop ulcers in the legs. What are the risks of developing venous disease? Your risks of developing venous problems are higher if you have a family history of vein problems. It is also more common as you age. Older people have more venous problems because of course the veins get older and more fragile. 
women have a higher rate of varicose veins, but of course, varicose veins can also happen in men. But certainly pregnancy and multiple pregnancies is a big factor in worsening varicose veins. Other factors that increase your risk of venous disease include obesity, smoking, and hormone therapies. Having a risk of blood clots or even a clotting problem also increases your risk not only of developing more blood clots, but also the risk of other venous diseases. Now let's talk about the venous problems and we're gonna start with varicose veins. If you've ever seen somebody walking around with those kind of ropey looking, warmy looking, dilated and raised veins in their legs, well, those are varicose veins and they can be of any size. They can also be twisted, bulging, and you can clearly see under the skin. And they can get quite ugly, so people don't really like them. But not only they can be ugly, but they also can cause problems that impact people's lives. They can cause heaviness, aching, swelling, or itching in the legs. And not only they can affect people's jobs, but also their quality of life can affect things that they like to do, like hiking or exercise. And remember those valves we were talking about before? Exactly. The varicose veins happen when these valves in the superficial veins don't work properly. And that's why you develop pooling of this blood in these dilated veins, and with time, they're only gonna get larger and larger unless they get treated. And of course, like I mentioned before, varicose veins often run in your family, and other risk factors include older age, multiple pregnancies, obesity, and standing for long periods of time. Now, how do we know for sure that the symptoms in your legs are related to the varicose veins and the venous reflux? And the way to do that is with the use of compression. You see, if you use high-grade compression stockings and you feel better, that tells us that the varicose veins and the venous reflux is what's causing the symptoms. And in fact, most insurances require a trial of compression stockings proving that there is improvement of your symptoms to make sure that your problems are related to the varicose veins. But of course, as soon as the compression socks come off, the pain is back and the varicose veins are not going anywhere. Indeed, because these valves are not working, they're just gonna keep getting worse. Now, remember when I talked about deep and superficial veins? Varicose veins are always superficial veins. And remember I mentioned you don't need them? Yeah. And when you have varicose veins, that means those superficial veins are not only not helping you, but they are working against you. So closing them or removing them is the way we treat them. Now let's talk about spider veins. Spider veins are those very superficial small veins that are right under the skin and they are not raised like varicose veins. Those are those tiny superficial veins that are less than one millimeter and they are purpley and they look like a spider web and they do look ugly. Spider veins are usually harmless, but sometimes they can cause itching or mild discomfort. For the most part, the treatment for spider veins or reticular veins is usually cosmetic since they can be very ugly. Although some patients can have varicose veins and spider veins, the spider veins are not typically related to the varicose veins. And they don't develop as a consequence of a venous problem. They're essentially caused by hormonal changes, genetics, or just because. Sometimes they can happen after a trauma or near a scar from a prior trauma. And essentially they just don't look good. And that's the main reason that people want to get rid of them. Again, from a medical perspective, I want to make a differentiation between varicose veins and spider veins. Varicose veins tend to be raised and they are related to valve problems. Whether spider veins, they tend to be small, they are not raised, they are not pressurized, and they are just like little veins dilated under the skin. In short, because the varicose veins are a problem with those leaky valves that we talked about, the treatment will require closing the main leaky veins. And sometimes if the veins have been dilated for a long period of time, we may need to remove those dilated veins in a procedure called microphlebectomies, where we use tiny little incisions or needle holes even to actually remove those leaky veins using a little crochet hook and medical loops, which are these funky glasses that allows us to see with incredible amount of detail through these very small incisions. Now, spider veins or reticular veins are treated with sclerotherapy, which is a fancy medical term where we inject a substance, a medication usually called polydocanol, 
which will rotate the vein from the inside and make it close. And then with time, they will disappear. Now, we also need to talk about some complications of varicose veins, which include heavy bleeding. Yes, varicose veins can bleed. Phlebitis, which is when the varicose veins get inflamed. Clot formation within the varicose veins, which sometimes could extend into the deep veins, and this can be dangerous. And varicose veins can also be associated with the skin changes and ulcers in the ankle. So let's talk a little bit about this. So phlebitis is when the varicose vein becomes inflamed and usually happens in a very superficial area and can be very painful. It presents almost like an infection. The skin gets red and painful and sensitive. You can also feel like a very hard area in the vein, which is warm and tender. And when that happens, you usually develop a clot inside the varicose vein. The treatment is usually just anti-inflammatories and heat pad or warm compresses over it. But we also need to monitor to make sure you don't develop a deep clot. Like I mentioned before, yes, varicose veins can bleed and this can be really scary. And they can bleed because these veins are very superficial. They're, they only have a thin layer of skin over them. And you know, like I mentioned, they can cause itching. So when people start scratching them, it can create a little tear in the skin and they can start bleeding, especially if you have dry skin. And I'll tell you, they will create quite a mess. So in this video, I'm gonna give you a few tips of what to do in case this happens. Number one, elevate your legs or ask somebody to help you. Number two, and this is the most important thing, get your finger and apply direct pressure in the bleeding vein. And you need to hold pressure for at least 10 minutes. Don't panic, just hold pressure and keep your leg elevated. I can promise the bleeding will stop by just putting your finger on it. And number three, give us a call and we'll be able to help you. There are multiple treatments we can do so this never happens again. And what we'll do is essentially, we'll treat the bleeding vein with a special foam that will close that vein so it doesn't happen again. And then we'll do a special ultrasound to see what's happening and what are the leaky veins that are causing the whole problem and we'll take care of those. Now we're gonna talk about chronic venous insufficiency or failure of your veins in the legs, which is a much more serious condition. And it happens when your deep veins are consistently unable to pump the blood back to your heart. And the blood then will pull in the legs and those symptoms will include persistent swelling, skin thickening or darkening, pain, and potentially ulcers, which are an open wound usually in your ankles. And this can happen in both your legs or just in one leg sometimes. You see, when the blood pulls in the distal veins, which are the veins near your foot, the pressure increases in the veins and that causes a leakage of small amounts of blood in the nearby tissues. And this leaked blood then gets broken down into hemoglobin, which gets deposited in the skin and not only causes that dark pigmentation, but also causes inflammation and decreased healing in the area. This will give a brown discoloration of your lower legs, which is called stasis dermatitis. And this will cause constant inflammation of the skin. And the skin becomes dry and inflamed. This is also called venous eczema. The skin and the soft tissues then tend to become thick and fibrotic and tight. It's like the skin gets really hard. Some patients tell me it doesn't even feel like their own skin. And this not only makes the skin ugly and difficult to heal, but also can cause big ulcers in the ankles that can be very difficult to treat. There are multiple causes of chronic venous insufficiency, but anything that can cause vein damage can lead to that in the long term. Often this is a result of long-standing varicose vein problem that was not treated or of blood clots in the deep veins. And without treatment, we'll only get worse over time. But managing chronic venous insufficiency is very difficult. And most of the time, your leg will never going to go back to normal at that point. And that is because even to this day, although physicians have been trying for over 50 years to replace the faulty valves, it is not possible. Many doctors and companies have tried to create valves that could be implanted or surgically repair them, but it really doesn't work. And most of the time it even leads to more clotting. Also, surgical bypasses in the vein can rarely be done in the veins like we do in the arteries and they just don't work that well. 
So the best treatment for chronic venous insufficiency is to do anything we can to prevent progression and prevent serious complications. If you have chronic venous insufficiency, you definitely need to see a vein specialist to make sure things are not gonna get worse. And lastly, I'm gonna briefly talk about deep venous thrombosis or DVT, which is when you develop clot in your deep veins. This is a very important condition and I have a full video about this if you're interested. This condition can be serious and is a medical emergency. But the good news is, I can say in 2025, these blood clots can be completely removed safely using amazing new techniques. So DVT or deep blood clots present with leg swelling, pain and redness. Sometimes can it start with something that feels like a Charlie horse, some pain in the calf, and then progress over the next few days to swelling and worsening of the pain. And that's essentially because the blood that is being pumped to the leg cannot return to the heart because these veins are blocked. And the swelling and pain can be debilitating, but the real danger is that these clots can also travel to the lungs, and this can result in something much more dangerous called a pulmonary emboli, which is a life-threatening condition. But luckily, pulmonary emboli can also be very effectively treated, and I also have a separate video about this. So essentially, the important thing to know here is if you develop leg swelling or pain and you don't know why, you should get an ultrasound of the leg, which is an easy way to diagnose this condition. Now, risk factors for DVT include immobility, like somebody who had a recent surgery or had a long plane flight. Patients with cancer are at very high risk for DVT. Also, hormone therapies like testosterone or birth control pills can also increase the risk of DVT. And I cannot be more clear, DVT can be a medical emergency, so if you suspect you have it because you have leg swelling or pain, then you should contact your doctor or go to urgent care or the ER. I want to end this video by talking about what can you do to help your veins. The good news is there are simple steps that you can take to protect your veins. Stay active. Walking is great for your veins because every time you walk, you're pumping blood back to your heart. Your calves work just as pumps. They just push the blood back. Avoid sitting or standing for too long without moving. Maintain a healthy weight. Elevate your legs whenever it's possible. That not only feels good, but also helps the circulation. Wear medical grade compression stockings if they were recommended by your doctor. Some people just like to wear compression stockings. I stand for most of the day because of my work, and I like to wear knee-high compression stockings. Remember, if you already have vein symptoms, there are many minimally invasive treatments today that can make a huge difference in your life. I hope you got some great information from this video. It's certainly a good initial step to help you ask the right questions to your doctor. And again, if you develop leg swelling or pain, visible veins or skin changes in your legs, don't ignore it, talk to a specialist. Early diagnosis and treatment can not only protect your health, but also improve your quality of life.